Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm Jason Aiken. In this week's episode, we are going to be discussing one of my favorite pulp characters, Solomon Kane. It seems only fitting, since this month is his 85th birthday. Solomon Kane is the work of Conan the Barbarian creator, Robert E. Howard. Kane made his first appearance in the August 1928 issue of Weird Tales. His debut tale is titled Red Shadows, although Howard intended it to be called Solomon Kane. All of the Solomon Kane stories appeared in Weird Tales magazine, save for the handful that were published posthumously in the late 1960s. As usual, if you want to read all the Solomon Kane tales by Robert E. Howard, Del Rey has you covered. They have everything you need in the Savage Tales of Solomon Kane collection, which includes all the short stories, fragments, and poems. This is the definitive Solomon Kane collection that stays true to Howard's vision. Solomon Kane is a very straightforward character. He basically makes it his mission to combat evil in all shapes and forms. He is a late 16th, early 17th century Puritan who splits his time between haunting European locales and Africa. He could be described as a somber yet determined individual. He has fair skin and a thin build. Yet, he is very powerful. His weapons of choice are his rapier and flintlock pistols. In later stories, he comes into possession of a juju staff, which is really the Staff of Solomon. The debut story, Red Shadows, is a revenge tale that takes Cain across two continents to avenge a girl who dies in his arms in France. Cain chases her killer, a fiend named Lelou, and he finally catches up with him in Africa. This is where he first meets his friend, the witch doctor, Nolonga. Skulls in the Stars is a true weird tale, with Cain investigating a haunted moor in England. Rattle of Bones is set in Germany's Black Forest, where Cain visits the Cleft Skull Tavern. In the tavern, Cain confronts both human and inhuman treachery. The Moon of Skulls sees Cain in Africa again, where, in, where he infiltrates a lost city in order to free a captured English girl. The city is called Nagari, and it is ruled by Nakari who Howard calls a vampire queen. The citizens wish to use the girl as a sacrifice in their blood ritual. Hills of the Dead is another tale set in Africa. This tale involves Cain finding vampires in the jungle and using the Staff of Solomon to smite them. The Footfalls Within sees Cain trying to save an English girl who is captured by Arab slave traders in Africa. Winds in the Night is my favorite Solomon Cain story. In Africa, Cain comes across a massacred village with all the huts missing their roofs. They appear to have been ripped off. He investigates and finds supernatural gargoyle-like creatures are the cause. Blades of the Brotherhood is a piece of historical fiction that has Cain battling the pirate known as the Fishhawk. The Right Hand of Doom sees Cain on his way to Torker Town, but the moral of this short story is to never betray a necromancer. Incomplete tales and fragments include Death's Black Riders, the Castle of the Devil, The Children of Ashur, and Hawk of Bosti. Howard also wrote three poems titled The One Black Stain, 
The Return of Sir Richard Grenville, and Solomon Kane's Homecoming. The one black stain and the return of Sir Richard Grenville feature Kane's ties to historical figures. Also, the Solomon Kane film starring James Purefoy has recently been released on Blu-ray and DVD in the U.S. by Anchor Bay. I ordered it off of Amazon and am crossing my fingers for a quality work. Purefoy is a great actor, and I am loving the images of him as Kane. It is just a shame it took so long to be released here in the U.S. As I mentioned, I highly recommend you get the Del Rey collection, titled The Savage Tales of Solomon Kane. All of these stories, fragments, and poems are in there, with wonderful illustrations by Gary Gianni. I read through this collection during one week at work a few years back, and I couldn't wait for break time to come around so I could dive back in. The Solomon Cain tales are a great mix of weird fiction and historical fiction. I would say my top three favorites are Wings in the Night, The Moon of Skulls, and Hills of the Dead. Cain is an interesting character, and Robert E. Howard is one hell of a writer. He not only writes weird tales splendidly well, but he is one of the best, if not the best, when it comes to action scenes. If you were a Conan fan, you owe it to yourself especially to check out Howard's other work. It is right up your alley. Red Shadows is available as an audiobook on LibriVox.org. I will put a link to it in the show notes and include a sample at the end of this episode. That's it for this week. I wanted to let everyone know that I am putting audio versions of the video cast up on iTunes. If you search for Pulp Crazy in the iTunes store and then click Podcasts, it will bring it up. Feel free to subscribe if you want to take Pulp Crazy on the go. I also added a link to the iTunes store page on the website. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at Pulp Crazy on Twitter and Facebook.com slash Pulp Crazy. You can email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Here's a sample from Red Shadows, read by Paul Siegel. Until next time. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Paul Siegel of Maynard, Massachusetts. Red Shadows by Robert E. Howard. Chapter 1. The Coming of Solomon. The moonlight shimmered hazily, making silvery mists of illusion among the shadowy trees. A faint breeze whispered down the valley, bearing a shadow that was not of the moon mist. A faint scent of smoke was apparent. The man whose long, swinging strides, unhurried yet unswerving, had carried him for many a mile since sunrise, stopped suddenly. A movement in the trees had caught his attention, and he moved silently towards the shadows, a hand resting lightly on the hilt of his long, slim rapier. Warily he advanced, his eyes striving to pierce the darkness that brooded under the trees. This was a wild and menacing country. Death might be lurking under those trees. Then his hand fell away from the hilt, and he leaned forward. Death indeed was there, but not in such shape as might cause him fear. "'The fire of Hades,' he murmured. "'A girl! What has harmed you, child? Be not afraid of me.' The girl looked up at him, her face like a dim white rose in the dark. "'You... who are... you?' Her words came in gasps. "'Not but a wanderer, a landless man, but a friend to all in need.' The gentle voice sounded somehow incongruous, coming from the man. The girl sought to prop herself up on the elbow, and instantly he knelt and raised her to a sitting position, her head resting against his shoulder. His hand touched her breast and came away red and wet. "'Tell me,' his voice was soft, soothing, as one speaks to a babe. "'Le loop she gasped, her voice swiftly growing weaker. "'He and his men descended upon our village. A mile up the valley, they robbed, slew, burned. 
That, then, was the smoke I scented, muttered the man. Go on, child. I ran. He, the wolf, pursued me and caught me. The words died away in a shuddering silence. I understand, child. Then? Then he, he stabbed me with his dagger. Oh, blessed saints, mercy. Suddenly the slim form went limp. The man eased her to the earth and touched her brow lightly. Dead, he muttered. Slowly he rose, mechanically wiping his hands upon his cloak. A dark scowl had settled on his somber brow. Yet he made no wild, reckless vow, swore no oath by saints or devils. Men shall die for this, he said coldly. End of chapter